at my face. Track my face. Don't track my shoulder. What's up guys, Jay here, and this video is going to be a short little primer on how uh, the different audio formats work. So the standard PCM and the uh, the newer DSD and DXD. How, how these things are structured, what exactly they are, and how your DAC goes about decoding them. Okay, so maybe not so much about how the DAC goes about decoding them, because I'm not entirely sure about that part. But I will definitely explain uh, what they are and, and how they're structured. So when doing the last video that I did with the, uh, the Micro iDAC 2 by iFi, I, I kind of had to, to look into a couple different things about the, uh, the difference between DSD and DXD and PCM and what all these things mean when, when DACs convert the binary signal, so just all the zeros and ones, the digital signal that comes from your computer, how they convert them to the analog waveform. So you may have noticed that the audio quality in this video is slightly better than the, uh, than the last couple of videos. And that is because while I still have the shotgun mic on my camera, I am using my Blue Yeti again this time. Because after editing the videos, the, uh, the sibilance and the quality, it just, just really isn't there for me. And I've also ordered a, uh, a mixer board, which I'll probably put a video on once I get that and get that set up. But my, my thought is that I can output from the Yeti into the mixer board and then the mixer board into the camera so that I will be using the Yeti microphone and the audio with the camera and I don't have to like sync it up in post or anything. So that should be a lot easier. And then I just have better sound quality. I have the mixer board if I ever decide to get another shotgun mic to use and it should just make things a lot better for the channel. So there are three main types of digital audio formats. The most common one that you will encounter is referred to as PCM or pulse code modulation. Then there is a lesser known format known as DXD or digital extreme definition. And this is actually more of a proprietary format. It was made by a couple companies, um, but essentially all that it is is PCM but with a much higher sample rate. And finally, there is DSD, which is a more audiophile format. It's supposed to have a lot more data in it. It stands for Direct Stream Digital. So I am standing in front of this here little whiteboard because I am going to be giving you uh, kind of explanations of how, or like little illustrations of how all this stuff works. So the first audio format that we are going to start with is... PCM, and hopefully that's legible. So for each audio format, we are going to have our graph, and we are going to be graphing the waveform. So just a simple waveform, we're going to pretend that this is our audio signal. So when it comes to PCM, there are two important numbers that you need to know. There is bit rate and bit depth. So we are going to start with bit depth because this will give us a good foundation for the rest of the system. So when music is stored on a file on your computer, it's essentially a bunch of zeros and ones, right? Everything on, computer is, on computers is made up of a one or a zero. And each of these values is referred to as a bit. They are one bit of information. It's either on or off. And with the permutations of these bits, you can make numbers. So when you have 16 bits of information, you have a possible 65,000 and, you know, change different numbers that you can, that you can come up with. And just for quick reference, the way that this works is, so in binary, we're gonna do three places. We have three decimal places. This number is a one. And we erase that. This number is a two. We erase that. This number is a three. And we erase all those. This number is a four. And it just goes on like that. So that's how you get you know, so many different numbers from the different amount of bits that you get. There are three common bit depths that you will encounter. There is 16 bit, 24, and 32. 16 bit has about 65,000 different permutations, so different numbers available, different values. 24 bit 
has about 16 million different values and 32-bit has like 2.1 billion different values that you can get. So these numbers are used to represent our waveform. So when we are reconstructing or when we are deconstructing this analog uh, audio wave, we take measurements at different points on the wave. Okay. And so let's say we have our zero decibel range. So like up here is zero dB. I don't know exactly. This might not be exactly how it works, but this is roughly the idea. So everything between here, depending on the bit, is broken up. We'll draw lines here. So this is where the bit depth comes in. So for 16-bit, we would have 65,000 different values that we can hit on this axis. So this defines the precision of these numbers here on the waveform. So for 24-bit, we would have 16 million, and 32-bit, we would have 2.1 billion different values. So that's an insane amount of precision to hit these values on the waveform. Now, the second number that comes into play is referred to as the bit rate, and this is measured in hertz, or generally kilohertz, as it comes to uh, the PCM. Hertz is a number of, is, is a count of occurrence per second. So the bit rate is when you hear these numbers, they're generally 44.1 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, uh, 192 kilohertz. And what these numbers are is the number of measurements taken per second. So in a 44.1 kilohertz recording, you will have 44,100 of these measurements every second. So the bit rate is what gives you precision on the x-axis, and the bit depth is what gives you uh, precision on the y-axis. So the higher the bit rate, the closer you can get these measurements together, the less space there is between them of the wave for the, uh, the decoder or the DAC to fill in between them. And the same goes for the, uh, the bit depth. The more measurements that you have on the y-axis, the, uh, the vertical axis here, the closer, the more precision you have, and the less space there is for the, uh, the converter to fill in. So it's a better representation of a wave. Okay, so to exemplify that, let's say we have a measurement at four hertz. So we get point here, point here, point here, and a point here or something. So then if we were to fill in the audio signal for this, it would maybe look something like this, right? So not very round, it's very sharp, very straight. And so the more of these points that we can fill in, the kind of rounder we can tell that signal is. So the more points that we have, the more accurate we can get on the reconstruction of the signal itself. So that is PCM in a nutshell. And the uh, and just to note, again, like I said with the, the DXD, it's the same thing as PCM, except you just have a whole lot more density in the x-axis. So it's a much higher, it's like a, they're like 380 kilohertz range or something is the, uh, the sample rate. That's what I was looking for. It's not bit rate, it's sample rate. Um, so I just got done explaining DSD, but I was calling it DXD the whole time. So now DSD. So with DSD, you also have a bit depth and a sample rate. However, with DSD, the bit depth is only one bit. So it's either a one or a zero. The signal's either on or off. The difference, the big difference comes in with the sample rate in DSD is in the millions of measurements per second instead of the thousands or hundreds of thousands. So DSD will go all the way up to, I believe like 24 million uh, measurements per second. And the way that this works is everything's either a zero or a one. So we'll have like a one here and just kind of divide it for, so like these will be ones and then, I don't know, it's probably starting to level off. So we'll go down to the zero, 
and it'll be like, I don't know, zero, and maybe it'll be another one just for something, and then like some zeros. So the general way that DSD works is everything's a one or a zero, and to the converter, a one means that the signal is increasing, and a zero means that the signal is decreasing. So this probably isn't an exact representation of how this signal decoding would work, but it gives you a good idea. It's the general foundation of how DSD works. That was a lot shorter than the PCM explanation. Of course, I guess there was some good groundwork in that one too. But anyway, so really, I mean, if you think about it, these are just two different approaches to the same thing. You're getting so much data in a, uh, in a certain amount of time. And really, once you get so much resolution, it becomes very difficult to hear the difference, if you can hear it at all. Other than that, this is all I really know about DSD. I have downloaded one song just to listen to it, just to, just to check it out when I was reviewing the, uh, the iDAC here. I couldn't really tell the difference. Um, not that I really tried. But uh, supposedly it's superior. It is like the audio file format. Uh, but really you don't need DSD. PCM is just fine. I mean, if you think about it, when you're doing 32-bit recordings, even 24-bit, but th at 32 bits at 192 kilohertz, whatever it is, that's 2. Point, what was it? 2.1 billion with a B. Uh, possible values that, that can be used to represent the amplitude of that wave and uh, 192,000 uh, values within one second. If that doesn't give you nearly a precise representation of the wave, I mean, I don't know what does. All right, well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Hopefully I explained things well enough. If I missed anything or if maybe I got something wrong, uh, let me know in the comments. As always, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these videos, I will be trying to release approximately one every week. Feel free to subscribe for more content. I will be putting out content for pretty much everything tech-related from PCs to PC peripherals like uh, maybe mice, keyboards, definitely headphones, DACs. I have a microphone video planned for the future. All right, well, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.